morning my fellow treasure hunters and explorers. I'm going to try to do a video here today. Um, I've been real busy working. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a video. I have been out several weekends and have a lot of video. It's just getting the time to edit it and get it out. I've had uh, uh, the flu or a cold here and so I've had a day off of work. And so I'm going to try to do a video here today if I don't start coughing and, <laughs> and if I'm able to talk. Anyway, I went on a exploration to look at uh, a map, a map rock, a rock that's uh, my friend Dan Lowe has extensively um, tried to save and to get the information off of. It's a it's an old, very old petroglyph. It's a a rock about the size of this room that I'm in. It's very big. It's probably um, 15 feet by 15 feet. And they call it the clamshell map because it's roughly in the shape of a clamshell. We believe that this map was left by the Aztec or by natives that were a break off from the Aztec or possibly by those who came back um, to hide the treasure of the Aztecs. Now I know that sounds like that's that's quite a, a quite a claim but anybody that spend any amount of time with this map knows without a shadow of a doubt that this is a very important map that shows some very important things and some of the things that this map shows is the Three Lakes area. <coughs> the Three Lakes area that has been associated with an Aztec uh, water trap. It shows the Johnson Canyon area. It shows the area, it shows the area of the Arizona Strip and along the Grand Canyon. And it and it indicates some very significant sites by the by the things that are on the map. Every time we go to this site we find more petroglyphs and things that we've missed from the previous time. Now this map is very old and it's even though it's been protected by an overhang it is being degraded by nature. Unfortunately we also have graffiti on this map from idiots that have no concept or understanding of the national treasures that these things are or the information that we could glean from these things. And so I'm not going to give the area or tell where it's at because if one out of ten people write cards their initials in this map it wouldn't be long before it's completely covered with graffiti and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we can't have people, can't show people these things and, and have them respect it. Um, anyway, when I went to this location, I was, um, I found some other petroglyphs and I also found some things that <clears throat> brought to the, brought to the front, <coughs> brought to the forefront <clears throat> some things that brought to the forefront of how important this map really is. And what happened to the Aztec and where did they come from? How did, how did this clamshell map get here and why? Well, I believe that through a series of catastrophic events, you whether you want to call it the Colorado Plateau uplift, whether it was the period of volcanic activity a thousand years ago that raised up many mountains and covered over a lot of covered over a lot of uh, terrain, or whether it was the extreme drought conditions like we're actually experiencing right now in the West, all these things played factor 
in the factors into the Aztec leaving Otsitland or the area that they were, Lake Kapala, and moving and, and, and suddenly showing up in Mexico and establishing a civilization in Lake Texacoco. They didn't just show up with this highly uh, evolved civilization and build temples and, and establish a city out on the water. All these things they had, they had already developed. These things were already being used somewhere else for them to show up and so quickly establish a civilization without, with, with complete structure and a society and a religion in place. I believe they also had a writing system, even though we, we found very little of it, we have some clues to it. And we see their very elaborate uh, carvings, their stone carvings, their, their work in gold, their work in silver, copper, their warfare, their um, system later came along of human sacrifice. All these things show a highly evolved civilization that is nearing its equinox rather than a civilization that's just starting out. And so what I believe happened is I believe that in the northern Utah basin where Lake Uinta existed, that this was Lake Kapala and that the Aztec had a civilization out on Lake, uh, Lake Uinta or if you want to call it Kapala and that with the Colorado Plateau uplift and these destructive forces that associated with that that the lake drained out and that, there, and that this uplifting and the mountains coming down and the volcanic activity that occurred that their civilization, their temples, their their city was destroyed, that was entirely leveled and destroyed, and that this is the only thing that would have caused the Aztec to leave and to try to find another place. This is also probably the area where they got most of their gold and their precious metals that they, that was their homeland. There was extensive mining and there's mining and rocks that have gold and silver and copper and because of the changes to the geology and the, the uplifting activity, a lot of this stuff has been hidden or covered up. But we find evidences of it today. I mentioned in the past that when Mel Fisher, the finder of the Atosha, that he had a map that he found in a cannon barrel that brought him to Utah and to the Uintas in search of gold that was on the Atosha. That was the or origins of the Spanish gold that was on the Atosha. And that's why he showed up there. I believe this was the source of the Aztec's gold. And I believe the destructive forces that destroyed the Lake Kapala and Otsitlan caused the Aztec to flee south. And when they fled south, they had a period of transition where they were moving around trying to establish and find a place that was similar to the area that they were familiar with. And they just kept going until they found that in Mexico City. And there's, you know, one of their priests had a vision. They were looking for a specific area that they would find and see an eagle with a snake in its talons and in a, on a cactus or something like that. And that's precisely what according to legend they did and they established uh, their new city and their new civilization there on Lake Texacoco and they began to build temples and do all the things that they had done previously and then when the Spanish arrived the Spanish began to loot and steal and pillage all their gold and their silver and their precious metal they were destroying their records and uh, and the Aztec could see that they were going to lose their entire um, history, their civilization, <clears throat> their history and their civilization. And that's when uh, Moctezuma, Montezuma, sent, <clears throat> sent a delegation of, of Aztec warriors and priests 
back towards the homeland to hide their records. And because they needed a way to be able to find these things, they left a trail that only they knew about. And this trail to the area where they cached their treasure or their records, whatever was important to them, were the navigation glyphs that I've talked about before and shown in other videos. These navigation glyphs, you can find them, they start outside, just outside of Mexico and they come all the way into southern Utah and then they end. You don't find them anywhere else. And they come into a specific area and whether or not there are many caches, smaller caches, or one big cache remains to be seen. But this clamshell map, which coincidentally shows some of these navi uh, shows one of these navigation glyphs on the map is the key. And these navigation glyphs come right back to the area of the clamshell map and into the surrounding areas. And this clamshell map shows the Johnson Canyon area. It shows the area that Freddie Crystal found the, the cave in that they excavated. It shows the area of the, the three lakes. The three lakes are very well represented with the Knab Creek coming down and the old Knab Lake that's now been diverted into the reservoir in Knab. And it shows all the, it shows Mount Trumbull area and all the area along the Arizona tr Strip. And it shows many, many caves and areas of, <clears throat> caves and areas that we believe are caches. And it has one significant site that's very close to the rim of the Grand Canyon. And I believe that this site that is very close to the rim of the Grand Canyon is the main treasure cave. Now in the History Channel, they're doing a series on private property and they're talking about different things with the Aztec and I believe that the, the area that they're working on in Kanab with, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, Dan, um, I can't think of his last name, but anyway I do believe that that area that he's in, that private property, is also a significant area and I believe it's also shown on this clamshell map. Um, interestingly enough, uh, and I'll talk about this in another video, there's also some Spanish writings close by in this area. So I believe that the Spanish were also trying to figure out this clamshell map. <clears throat> and this may have been one of the reasons that the Spanish were focused in this area at one point. Now I'm trying not to leave anything out, but <clears throat> this clamshell map has some figures and some figurines carved into it that are very very similar to Aztec, to the Aztec motifs and carvings on their temples. In one carving there is a serpent head and I'm not going to show it in this video because there are some Spanish inscriptions next to this serpent head and I wanted I want to do more research and study on it and be able to put together a, a better video but then then and um, take a little more time with focusing on just that <clears throat> now interestingly enough in this area around the Kanab area we have had and so we have several links to this area of interesting things. We have Freddy Crystal who came up looking and basically emptied the whole town of Kanab, excavating a cave that he had a map to from the archives in Mexico. We have the Three Lakes area that's been investigated multiple times as a, a uh, Spanish water or of a uh, Aztec water trap where we have evidence of a large deposit of gold. We have the um, navigation glyphs that have come up from Mexico to the southern Utah area. We have the historical um, record of the Paiutes and the other tribes in the area that tell that they are the keepers of a treasure that was left here by their ancestors. 
We know that they speak, a, that these tribes that are in this area speak a Uto Aztecan language. So we know that they are descendants of the Aztec. We also have the numerous other clues and stories of the Spanish coming, trying to, tr trying to trace the, the steps of the Aztec. And they only made it to the rim of the Grand Canyon and there they stopped. And so we have multiple um, clues, multiple keys, but I believe that this clamshell map which is very little known about it, very few, very few people know about it. The people that know about it have found it accidentally. But through extensive study of this map, we are, have been able to identify many of the locations on this map. And we believe that this may be the key to finding uh, what the Aztec left behind. As, as pertaining to the uh, navigation glyphs, uh, there is a quote from a a historical document about the Aztecs when they were coming back that they that the priests worked their magic on the ground and we believe that this magic was they were using their sticks in, with these navigation glyphs to be able to retrace the location of where their records and their treasure was kept was was hidden so anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the in the comment section below. <clears throat> please like and subscribe this video and give us a thumbs up because it helps the word to get out. And you know, if you if you feel like supporting this channel, you can buy our merchandise or donate to the uh, the uh, PayPal link below. It's appreciated. Well, I'm headed here towards Kanab. I'm looking at an Aztec, potential Aztec site. And I'm going to check out this site, this map. I think it might be an Aztec treasure map. Um, and we're going to try to get some good video and pictures of it and explore around the area. I also have another little errand that I want to look for. you know what I find when we get closer here so it's been a kind of a windy dusty day here but I'm gonna get out I got some time Unfortunately, this really pisses me off. Somebody's over the years, all these assholes that put their graffiti on their rocks. I could chop their hands off, feed it to them. Aztec style. significant 
sundial or a big lift that tells you there's something there. I don't know if this giant crack is Rocket Corporation. If that's the case, One of the most significant things on this map are these indentions up here that I believe represents three lakes, the so-called Aztec treasure lakes or trap lakes that they've been trying to get into for years. They found evidence of gold in there. You've got away by thousands of years of erosion that you'll never be able to get all the, the meaning out of what's here. And uh, but there are some Aztec symbols on this map. And Lots of unique figurines. Fortunately, like I said, there's a bunch of graffiti in here. It just angers me to see it. We're used to have those type of people in civilization, graffiti on stuff, and destroy everything. But anyway, here I am at the Aztec navigation map. I think this map holds the key to a lot of mysteries. I think if we could, if we had it in its completeness and its when it was made, we'd be able to understand and see the locations of some of these things. And uh, I think it would reveal where some of the secrets of the Aztec. an Aztec symbol. This is an Aztec symbol that you can see in Peru, the Nazca lines or whatever they call these. That same figure is found there in South America. You can obviously see the more modern graffiti. For instance, this Jane 
little shit faced Jane or Jack or whoever, Jake. You can see the smooth lines they made with a stick or a rock. And obviously, like on this, you can see these were pecked much older. They're pecked with a stone, harder stone, or a piece of old iron, or a piece of copper, whatever they have that was harder than this rock. And then you can see that some of this is really weathered where the moisture is, and the wind and the dust, the sand is just like sandblast. Sandblast. here and they show some interesting features there's the the bear paw or the, the track or the footprint of the enemy following them whether that's the Spanish or as my friend Dan Lowe says the older Greek or Romans that were over here that there's evidence of that the Aztec knew about. All right, well, significant, significant site. These spirals mean go up or go down, go up to the top or go down to a cave.